Others will also say things like, in this game of life, you better play your cards right. You ever hear that? This is because people realize, though, that in this life, a game of cards and life have a lot of resemblance. You could play the right cards or you could play the wrong cards. In life, it's the exact same thing. You could do the right choices or you could play the wrong choices. This life, it's three players. It's Jesus, it's the devil, and it's you and me in this game of life. This is because we're living in what the scriptures called the great controversy with the, the battle of good and evil. The thing about this game is that we already started to play this game since way back in the Garden of Eden. Our forefathers, Adam and Eve, they tried to play this card game against Satan and they lost. They were deceived in order for human beings to still win. Jesus has to step in and take the loss for us. I was in a bind uh, church. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed to tell you all that. I was in a bind and I took this loan to get this car because this was the only company that would finance me. My credit at the time was so bad. And the guy, he kind of sw swindled me a little bit. And he uh, got me into this high interest rate loan. And I remember when I start doing my payments and I see that the payment was not really coming down the way he said it was going to. And I said to myself, I will be on a, a mission now. I want to pay this car off within a year. And I worked at it. I start doubling up my payments so that the second payment will go towards the principal. And I remember as I... I, as I Went, went on my way down to this last payment for this car. I could have paid online. I could have mailed a check. I could have called him on the phone and make that payment. But no, 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 no. Church, I wanted to walk myself up in that place, in that dealership, and pay off this car loan. They're going to see me today. I want to look right in their eyes and slam that payment down to experience that satisfaction. Like I wanted to slam that payment down. Like when you have that Uno card and you, Uno. That's when I really understand why Jesus chose to come to this sin sick world. Jesus, he, 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 he could have called 10,000 angels to, 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 to destroy this world and he could have set himself free. Jesus, he, he could have sent a lamb to, to, to come and die for our sins until he comes that second time. Jesus could have bur sent burnt offerings in his stead to supply our, our, our needs until he come that second time. Jesus could have sent a king and Solomon, he could have sent David, he could have sent somebody else in his place. Jesus could have sent a prophet. He could have sent Moses. He could have sent Elijah. Jesus could have sent someone in his place to pay the price for our sins. But Jesus wanted to pay that penalty himself. Jesus wanted to slam that last unicorn in this earth history in the devil's face. Jesus wanted light. He wanted the pleasure to, to, he wanted the satisfaction in redeeming the universe. Jesus wanted to slam that last part that will defeat the enemy forever. You see, he landed a wild card when he stunned the enemy and the world that he was born through his created yet without intercourse, without touch. You see, when Herod tried to kill him, he tried to kill the child Jesus. Jesus then landed a skip card because his time was not yet come. When Jesus was betrayed by Judas, he landed another wild card because Judas, he had a choice whether he will go forward to this plan, whether he will deceive Jesus or whether he will ask for repentance. Then Jesus was whipped. He took the stripes. He, he did not run and free himself. But they thought that they were beating him 
to death. They thought that Jesus was being beaten in this Uno game of life. They thought that Jesus was going to give up. They thought that the, most, the more they beat him, they thought the more they punish him, the more he suffered that he will just give up on humanity. But what they didn't know is that every whip that they have there, every time they whip him, they send Jesus to the Uno deck. Uno deck of this life. And Jesus draw the cards for us. Jesus was, was drawing cards of grace. Jesus was drawing cards for his people. Jesus was drawing cards of mercy. Jesus was drawing cards of long suffering. Jesus was drawing cards of power. Jesus, every time they whipped him, scripture says, by his stripes, we were healed. That every whip, every stripe, they give Jesus. Jesus was going into that deck, racking up ammunition on our stead. You see, every time Jesus goes to the deck of cards, he took our punishment that we were supposed to receive. They beat Jesus, stripe one. Jesus went into the Uno deck. And he drew a wild card. Stripe two, Jesus went into the Uno deck. And he got... A draw two, strike three, Jesus went into the deck and he got a skip card. Strike four, Jesus went into the deck of life and he got a draw four. And all those cards were supposed to be against us instead of allowing those cards to go back to us. Jesus played on the cross his uno card. Jesus says, uno right there on the, on, the, on the cross. And then after he played that, he played the reverse card. So everything that was supposed to go to us, all of the pain and suffering that was supposed to come to us, the second death that was supposed to come to us, our sins that were supposed to lay on our head, it started to rest on Jesus. He reversed it back on him. Jesus played the reverse card and all of our sins laid upon him that's why the bible says our chastisement the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we were healed when they nailed both jesus hands jesus landed that draw two card that he had earlier on the enemy now when they nailed both his feet jesus landed the draw four card on the enemy then jesus landed his last blow he waited until the all was fulfilled. He, he waited until all the prophecies were fulfilled. He waited until all our sins were laid upon him. He waited until the sky turned dark. He waited until he was separated from his father for the first time in, in, in all of history. He waited until that thief on the cross turned to him to be saved. He waited until West Bank's sins was all allocated for. He waited until Pastor Lawrence's sins were all in place he waited until the enemy thought he would go and give up he waited until the sins of the world all pressed upon him he waited until his heart could not beat anymore he waited until he could not take any more breath then he said this it is finished oh no i've paid it all Uno, I've won the game. Uno, our debt is now paid. Uno, we was redeemed from sin. Uno, we now have salvation. Uno, the enemy was defeated. Uno, Jesus played his second to last card right there on the cross. With his own life he said father into your hands now i commit my spirit and he did the last uno chord and hung his head and died jesus death was not the end of the game though it was just the uno part of the game you see everyone know that when you play the uno card the game is not over yet Almost over. But what happens is that it gets the attention of all the players in the game. 
Jesus' death got the attention of the world. Didn't it? The world have the attention. Jesus has played at last Uno card, and every player in the game now has freeze to see what will he play next. What will he do to end this game? And right now, church, we are in Uno. Right now, church, we are in this part called investigative judgment where God is looking on his people to see what we're going to do. God is writing down and he's jotting down our actions. He's jotting down the, what, what cards we are playing in our life. God has prepared the way for us. God is looking on the world and he said because of coronavirus, who is going to use that as an excuse not to worship me? Who is going to use that as an excuse not to come to church when they go to restaurants every day? Who will use that as an excuse? Not to come into his house of worship, but they will go to Walmart. Who is doing my business in this last days? I'm telling you, church, that Jesus is about to end this game called life here on earth. He's about to play his last card. His last card is no other than the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's when Jesus rolled the sky back as the scroll is, is the last card that is coming right now. It's when Jesus descends from heaven with a shout and, and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And when the dead in Christ rock those graves, it's the last card. It's when Jesus comes down to this earth and he comes down to the earth with all the billions and billions of angels that just buzz your ear. It's the last card that is about to come when Jesus comes and he bursts that sky. The dead will be awakened. The righteous will be raised. Jesus will say, well done to those who were faithful. And he also will say, your sin remaineth and those who were not. Jesus will resurrect the wicked and destroy them in the lake of fire along with the devil. That's when that last card will be played. But right now we're in Uno. Church, I believe Jesus' hands is almost to the point where it hit the Uno table of this earth history. 